Previously on the dragon. Oh my god, what the hell? The parrot? I will rally the kings and queens behind Catullus and finally destroy the Zadian threat. Hell yeah, I mean, no, that's terrible. Chapter 5, Breaking the Seal. Oh, I think I know this episode. This is the one where Callum drinks too much and wonders when is the best time to go to the bathroom. Because once you pee, you're just going to be peeing all night. Is this a different kingdom? Halt! My guy's got a giant map on his back. Proceed alone to the meeting point. How dare you talk to Baron like that? He will put you in a coin. We were reassured when we received the scroll informing us that you would be the regent of Catalus until Ezrin comes of age. Oh, they don't know. Oops. I apologize for my lateness. Queen Anya of Doran. We are here to discuss some rather weighty matters. Will your regent be joining us soon? I speak for myself now and for my people. Yes, this is a very serious oh, situation. Oh no! Stop! It seems I am a crown without an adult, and you're an adult without a crown. Oh! Got him! Everyone just leaves. After centuries of fighting amongst ourselves, the five human kingdoms finally found a balance. An era of peace. But a new threat has arisen to challenge all of humanity. A threat from Zadia. The guy's a good speaker. You gotta give him that. And he's got the sickest PowerPoint. Sunfire elves are gathering near the border. An invasion is imminent. Even worse, there are reports of shadows in the clouds. Dragons! <laughs> Presentation skills on point. The time to stop Zadia is now! We must stand together to protect our common humanity. <laughs> this guy's face. <laughs> Fight beside each other to drive back this threat. I can already tell Anya has a good head on her shoulders. This comes up a lot in these shows, right? But I think we can spot this really clearly in shows when someone's being overly dramatic and using fear as a way of selling things. But honestly, I feel like we're not guarded enough about that in real life. Like I see that being used so often as a tool. And the reason why it persists as a tool is because we're not immune enough to that as a tool. It seems all too often that public discourse is relegated to appealing to emotion. You know, it's good to care, but I feel like sometimes the emotion is used as a mask and it doesn't allow for nuance and subtlety. You know, it sort of drives people into very polarized positions. It's like everything's always the end of the world when really very few things are the end of the world, fortunately. I feel like the actual risk for the end of the world or something really terrible happening is believing everybody who says it's the end of the world coming, if that makes sense. If the other kingdoms agree to act in unity, we will commit to this alliance. Yes, in unity, you will have our support as well. Why are they all so shady about it? Queen Anya, what say you? I am undecided. Undecided? <laughs> Didn't you see my PowerPoint? This is why we need an adult. Oh, a no. Who can make strong choices Baron. for their kingdom. I won't send my armies to face unknown danger based on a two minute speech. I may be a child, but apparently I'm the least impulsive of us all. Oof. I hardly call, we'll do what everyone else does, a decision. <laughs> well, yes. Got a fair point. I like this girl. And that's another thing, right? Like, what's wrong with not having an opinion on something? I feel like that's, that's honest. It means you're thinking. It means you're not being pushed into, like, a simple black and white camp. This maybe is a different case because she's a leader and so this is sort of the area she's supposed to be good at. But speaking more generally, I think the issue with difficult matters is that the world is so complex. Anything that involves, like, a global decision or, you know, a large number of people, in order to understand that, really understand it, you're probably going to have to be an expert at a lot of things. Like, if you want to talk about politics, right, you got to understand so many things. you got to understand law. You have to understand economics. You have to understand psychology. You have to understand history. And without any one of those things, it's hard to have a real deep understanding of a complex problem. But when you think about it, most people aren't even experts at one thing. So how do we expect everyone to be good at all these things simultaneously? And so you end up with, like, things getting sort of pushed into simplified versions, palatable versions, and those things are sold through emotion. I think real honest search for truth and search for understanding, it takes some humility and like saying, you know, when you're out of your depths or when you don't know. And you know, that has a couple benefits. Like one, it stops you from being pulled into things like 
with Anya and Viren, but also it allows you to actually explore those things in a more healthy manner. Because if you already know everything, what's the point of learning? <sighs> Perhaps I was rash in my words. <laughs> I apologize. Right. Let's try a little diplomacy now. Far wiser than your years. There you go. Change of course. I have had to survive adults trying to usurp my throne, coups, conspiracies, and assassinations. But sometimes it's not the hard threats but the soft threats that are the worst. Sweet words can be more dangerous than hidden daggers. I like this girl. She's good. Would you allow me to share a story with you? Nine years ago, my oldest friend, Prince Harrow, became the king. Nice, some backstory. I love it. I want to make a difference, Sarai. You will. You be a champion of love and justice, and I'll be fighting by your side. <laughs> Look at little Callum, <laughs> little Ezrin. Ah, my official portrait <laughs> for history books and whatnot. Put on your best history face. <laughs> Why don't you join me, Viren? Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, it hurts. And you should stand next to me as I know you will stand by me through anything. I brought you a surprise. I see it started early. <laughs> yeah. Ezrin is a lucky boy, born a prince as I was. But there are so many in our kingdom who were born with less. Harrow, what troubles you? Why do I deserve this? What did I do except being born with everything? Wow. I think the answer to his question of why do I deserve this is that he doesn't. It's not about that. There's no such thing, really. Sometimes I think that this whole idea of deserving, right? Like, what do people deserve? In a way, it's a way of trying to force the illusion of control on, like, a chaotic universe. There's tons of unfairness. It seems to just be a default state, and it's hard to live with that. I think it's all about how you internalize it and how you use it in your own life. And I think that Harrow is using it in a way that maybe is useful or productive. Like, he's thinking about what he can do in his situation to do good for others, which I think is, it's a nice thought. Lady Justice came to me in a dream. Lady Justice, huh? True justice was a fair system, fair no matter the accident of my birth. That the rights and laws and opportunities within the system should stand to protect and empower everyone. That was a great speech, and I think his heart is in the right place. The challenge is just how, you know, how. I think actually most people want what he described. And that's his challenge, right? I really admire that. Because it would be so easy for him to just rest as a king and enjoy his life of kingness and leisure. But what he's trying to do is going to be insanely difficult, and it's incredibly dangerous. There are a lot of ways that that can go wrong, too. And it seems like, in many ways, it did go wrong for Harrow. He told me he thought of himself as a servant of all the people of Catullus. A servant king. Which inspired Viren. But one day, two visitors came from a faraway place. Another kingdom, in fact. They were my parents. Yes. Hmm. Interesting. The two dragon princes. <laughs> oh, damn, why does that hurt my heart so much? Oh no, bait. Damn, I was just joking about him being jealous, but that's actually sad. What the hell? Hey, can a guy get a couple minutes of below deck privacy around here? No, it continues. I thought Full Metal Alchemist was the only show that would twist the knife. Why don't you join me down here? I could use a little extra light. Oh. This is a good episode for Bait. I suddenly have a tremendous amount of feeling for him. <laughs> Weird. I'm glad he didn't get eaten by the Unagi. Take back what I said. Your parents, the Queens of Durin, carried themselves with great the Queens dignity. of Durin, that's cool. That's the first time I can ever remember seeing that. This winter, we will run out of food. And a hundred thousand people will die. Then we will help you. The kingdom of Catalis will share all that we have with the people of Durin. I wonder if there aren't going to be some logistical issues with this. If you share with them, 100,000 people will still die, but half of them will be from our own kingdom. Then it seems we have no choice. Exactly. We will share whatever we have with them, and we will share in their suffering. Wow. It's really fun seeing Harrow and Viren's dynamic. Harrow seems like more of the idealist, Viren seems like more of the pragmatist. It's probably one of the reasons why they were a good pair for so long. A new possibility presented itself to me. I have been doing research. Yes, I can see that. 
poring over ancient texts, maps, and archives, and I may have found a creative solution. Is it dark magic? Well, go on. Behold! It's a rock. <laughs> the disappointment is real. If we can hunt this monster and slay it, I can use the heart of the Titan in a powerful spell that will warm the land and allow us to magically grow an incredible bounty. Of course, at the time, I was not the king's closest advisor. Right. This is crazy. We kill one monster to save a hundred thousand people. You keep calling it a monster. Yes, it's a giant beast made of rock and magma. I call that a monster. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There's no monster you can slay and solve all your problems. There's no shortcut. This is going to be a very slippery slope. It's our only chance. Oof. Seems like the bigger risk is just war with Zadia. It's a tough question. In my opinion, I'm undecided. I'm here. Queen Sarai. Oh no, is this gonna be how she dies? I stand by you anyway. Wow. Thank you. The King of the Dragons patrols the skies from dawn until dusk. So we will enter Zadie at sundown. And we must return with the heart of the Titan before the first moments of the sun's rise. Also, give the guy credit for riding out into the front line. He could have just ordered some grunts to do it, right? But he believes in it, and then he shows up. We found the Titan, but it wasn't what we expected. Dead. Don't sound so disappointed. If it's dead, we don't need to kill it. We just open it up and take what we need. What's the catch? There are words he hasn't said to me, and they're all right in there. They're just waiting to come to life. Once I read the last word, then he'll really be gone. Forever. It's a good boy. Are they connected, these two stories? No, oh, it's not dead. Double cliffhanger! What the hell? <laughs> nice, nice blindfold. But he's peeking. That's so cool. That episode was incredible. See, that's what I'm saying, right? Like, there's just so much here and you can feel that it's there, but they're so, like, careful with it. So then when you get it, it's amazing. Like, we got so much backstory on Harrow and Sarai, Viren, but that also connects to something that opens up the world even more in the present, which is the other kingdoms and Anya, which is awesome. I'm, I'm definitely gonna like Anya. I like her already. You know, it's funny. I almost feel like the episodes where they don't go anywhere are some of the strongest. Like the first couple episodes of season two where they were just in the moon sanctuary. Those are some of my favorites. And now this, they're just stuck on the boat, right? But we get this amazing flashback, which is so cool. It adds such a richness to the characters and, and to Viren especially. So really great stuff. I'm hoping that the next episode is a continuation of this one. I hope we get to see like how this plays out and how it's all connected. But anyway, that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time for episode six.